These are the lecture notes for chapter 23 on plants. In section 23.1, um, we will concentrate on the features of land plants. All plants are multicellular. There's no such thing as a single-celled or unicellular plant. All plants carry out photosynthesis, and all plants are from the domain eukarya, meaning that their cells are eukaryotic and have a nucleus. Um, algae are found, although algae are um, related to plants, algae are found in the kingdom Protista, and the difference between plants and algae um, is that the plants protect the zygote and plants also protect and nourish the embryo. Some plants do this through um, spores and some do this through the formation of seeds. Now this table, table 23.1, uh, covers the characteristics of plants and it also covers all of the groups of plants that we're gonna learn. So this is a wonderful summary of the information that's covered in this chapter. And if I were you, I would try to focus on it, read through it, um, and learn as much of this table as you can. Because you, you definitely, this will definitely cover, if you learn this table, that's, that's quite a bit of information that you would cover. So um, that's gonna be on the exam. So uh, first of all, plants are in the domain eukarya. Uh, along with the kingdom Protista, the kingdom Fungi, and the kingdom Animalia. Plants are found within the supergroup Archaeoplastida, along with um, the green and red algae. And then the plants are found within the kingdom Plantae. Um, plants have the characteristics of being multicellular. Um, they exhibit an alternation of generations life cycle. They protect the embryo either with the, um, spores or seeds. And um, they have a waxy cuticle that covers their leaves and stems and prevents water loss. The first group of plants that we'll learn about are called the bryophytes. They are non-vascular. They don't have vascular tissue. Um, but they are the liverworts, hornworts, and mosses. The second group are vascular plants, but they produce spores instead of seeds. And they are the lycophytes and the pteridophytes. That P is at the beginning of the word pteridophyte is silent. The lycophytes contain um, organisms called club mosses and the pteridophytes contain the ferns and the horse tails. And then we have the vascular plants that do produce seeds and they are the gymnosperms and the angiosperms. Gymnosperms almost always produce cones and angiosperms are the flowering plants. Uh, as far as the ancestry or evolution of land plants, um, from the evidence that we have, land plants are most closely related to the freshwater green algae called charophytes. And it's a picture of a charophyte here on the left. Plants have characteristics that adapt them uh, to be able to live on the land or to be terrestrial. Even though there are aquatic plants, most plants are land plants. So they have adaptations that help them minimize dehydration or water loss. They have adapt adaptations to move water and nutrients against gravity throughout the entire plant and to protect them from damage from sunlight. They have a waxy covering called a cuticle that protects them from drying out or desiccation. They have small openings, usually on the underside of their leaves called stomata. And this allows them um, to exchange gases with their environment, um, exchange oxygen and carbon dioxide with the environment. And many plants have tracheids, which are specialized cells that help them to move water um, 
<laughs> this says to move water against the force of water. It's supposed to be gravity here. To move water against the force of gravity. Um, so that allows them to move water upward from the roots all the way up to the top of the plant. Uh, this shows you a picture of the cuticle on the surface of the leaf. And then on the underside of leaves, the, there are openings called stomata that allow for gas exchange. Then on page or slide 11, um, one of the adaptations that plants have to reduce the effects of ultraviolet radiation is that they have an alternation of generations life cycle. In other words, they have a structure that is the cells are haploid and a structure where the cells are diploid and they alternate between those structures. So let's talk about this alternation of generations life cycle because it is very different from what we're used to with humans and what we learned about in um, when we covered mitosis and meiosis in Bio 111. So alternation of generations mean that, means that there are two different generations within a plant, and the plant alternates between a multicellular haploid phase, that means all the cells are haploid and only have one set of chromosomes, and a multicellular diploid phase where all the cells have two copies of um, the chromosomes. So the multicellular haploid phase, um, those individuals are called gametophytes. Gametophytes produce gametes, which are egg and sperm, by mitosis. And that, I almost thought that was a mistake, but it's not a mistake because the gametophyte is already haploid. Eggs and sperm are haploid. So they actually are produced by mitosis, not meiosis. So be careful with that. Um, in fact, I am going to try to um, circle that so that you so that you don't um, forget. Uh, the male gametangia are called antheridia and the female gametangia are called archegonia. So that means the antheridia produce the sperm and the archegonia produce the egg, eggs. And then um, this is similar to what happens with animals. Eggs and sperm combine, that's called fertilization, and they form diploid sporophytes. So multicellular diploid plants are called sporophytes and sporophytes produce spores by meiosis. And the, um, in two of our, three of our groups of plants, they produce spores instead of seeds, and the spores are released, and once, once they land on a substrate um, that contains enough water and nutrients, they will germinate or grow. This is a picture of the alternation of generations life cycle. The haploid stages are in brown and they're on, on the bottom of the picture and then the diploid stages are in blue and they're on the top. So if we start with the gametophyte, the gametophyte is the multicellular plant that is haploid, its cells are haploid. Those cells divide by meiosis, sorry, <laughs> I did it again. They divide by mitosis because they're already haploid. I'm sorry for those lines there, but they divide by mitosis and form gametes, sperm and egg, which are haploid. Once they unite, the sperm and egg um, unite, then they form a diploid zygote. The diploid zygote grows into the multicellular sporophyte plant, which divides by meiosis to produce spores, which are haploid. Okay. The, um, in each one of the plant groups that we learn, we're, one thing I want you to learn about each group is whether is which generation is dominant or conspicuous. In other words, when you look at the plant, which generation do you recognize as being the plant? Um, for example, mosses. Everybody knows what a moss plant looks like. We see it growing on the ground. Let me see if I can find a picture, a good picture. Uh, 
Okay, well, we know that here's a picture of a, a moss um, with the gametophyte, which is the green portion, and the sporophyte, which is grows out of it, which is a stalk that grows out of the top of the gametophyte. So when we look at moss plants growing on the ground or on a rock, um, we see this green plant looks almost like a carpet. The plants are very, very short because they're non-vascular. And those green moss plants that we see that are conspicuous are the gametophyte stage. So they are the gametophyte stage. That is the dominant stage of the moss plant. Once we get to ferns and gymnosperms and angiosperms, the dominant phase, the conspicuous phase, is the sporophyte. So the only plant that you have to learn that has a dominant gametophyte stage is the moss plant. Okay, so um, the gametophyte is dominant in the moss. In ferns, pine trees, and flowering plants, the sporophyte is dominant. That is an adaptation to land. And you can see what the gametophyte and sporophyte look like in all the different types of plants. The um, moss plant, the gametophyte, which is dominant, is the green moss. And then the sporophyte is this stalk that has a capsule. That is the sporophyte. Um, then when you look at the fern, the actual fern plant that you would recognize um, growing in a hanging basket or growing out in the woods or the forest, that is the sporophyte. So the dominant stage is the sporophyte generation. The gametophyte is actually this little heart-shaped leaf that grows flat on the ground. And you it's hard to see when you're uh, walking in the woods um, it's hard to see the gametophyte of the fern plant because a lot of times it's covered up with leaves and other debris. You just don't see it. But the um, fern plant, which is the sporophyte generation, grows up out of this little heart-shaped leaf. Then as you get to the gymnosperms and the angiosperms, the dominant generation is still the sporophyte, but the, the um the gametophyte generation is very, very reduced. Um, here you can see the pollen and the pollen tube and then the egg with its embryo sac. Th those are the gametophyte generations in the gymnosperms and the angiosperms. So they're actually more of a part of the plant, um, of the sporophyte plant itself. Um, it's hard to get used to, but I'll try to talk to you about it as we go through the different um, the different types of plants. We're going to start with our non-vascular plants, which are the bryophytes. Um, they do not have vascular tissue, so they're very short. They're low-lying plants um, because the only way for them to get water and nutrients throughout the entire plant is by diffusion. They don't have true roots, stems, and leaves. Um, they have root-like structures and leaf-like structures, but they're not true roots and leaves and stems because a true root, stem, or leaf has vascular tissue. The dominant generation in the bryophytes is the gametophyte, which produces eggs in archegonia, and the sperm are produced in antheridia, and they are flagellated because they swim to the egg. That's how they get to the egg is they swim. Um, so there must be enough water in their environment that will allow for sperm to swim to the egg. The three types of bryophytes are mosses, liverworts, and hornworts. And you're probably more familiar with the mosses. There are some liverworts. Um, a common liverwort is marcantia. And some liverworts contain rhizoids, which are extensions that anchor the plant in the soil and aid in absorption. So they're similar to roots. Liverworts can reproduce sexually or asexually. Um, when they reproduce asexually, there are groups of cells called gemmae that will detach from the thallus or main body and grow into a new plant. Here's some pictures of, this is a picture of the female gametophyte um, or 
the of the liverwort plant marcantia and um liverworts have they have a female gametophyte and then they have a male gametophyte just like mosses mosses also do um and this shows you the gemme cups on the body or thallus of a liverwort and those will break off and grow into a new liverwort that's how they reproduce asexually <clears throat> here's a picture of a hornwort you can see the sporophyte is still a stalk that grows up from the gametophyte mosses are the most recognized um, of the bryophytes they're the largest phyla of the non-vascular plants or the bryophytes and they're mostly found in moist environments we have three groups of mosses the peat moss granite moss and true mosses as far as the life cycle of the moss the gametophyte is called the protonema so that's the little green moss plant is called the protonema um they those protonema will either form into antheridia, which produce sperm, or archegonia, which produce egg. The sporophyte will grow only out of the archegonia. Only the sporophyte will grow only um, from the female gametophyte tissue. So if you ever see a moss plant with a sporophyte or stalk growing out the top, usually it'll be red or reddish. Then it's that was the female moss plant. Um, the sporophyte does have a capsule at the top that contains spores and it will um, burst open and the spores will land on the substrate, such as the ground, um, and germinate into the gametophytes. Here's your male gametophyte and your female gametophyte. And then you can see if you keep going that um, the sperm will swim from the male gametophyte to the female gametophyte and fertilize the egg. Then you have a zygote that develops within the female gametophyte or archegonia and it will grow up into a, the sporophyte or the stalk and then um, that sporangium within that capsule will undergo meiosis and produce spores which are haploid and those spores will grow into gametophyte plants and this just goes on over and over and over um, and we'll start the next recording with the lycophytes, which is slide number 25.